2021 were a lot of sci-fi books predicted us to be an interplanetary species and instead this literal potato house makes 13 times more than an eight unit apartment building when you compare apples to apples or should I say potatoes to potatoes. Now if you've been hiding under a rock the last decade which probably would make a pretty cool house you may have missed that weird and cheap homes have not only become a trend but a very lucrative and expensive trend depending on which side you're standing on. And the reason why we're seeing this comes down to three key problems. A perceived saturated market, people are afraid of being too weird, and then millennials. Of course, always it's the millennials. But first, let me show you the numbers behind that 13x difference between a potato and legitimate residential building. So let's take a look at an eight unit apartment. Assuming it's a full capacity without a lease turnover, we'll say it averages $1,500 a month per unit, which is about $12,000 a month. Now, I won't bore you with the math, but there are expenses when it comes to owning and operating a building like this. We take those expenses out of the revenue and it gives us an operating profits before taxes. And not to totally confuse you, I then use an 8% cap rate to estimate the value of this apartment building, which will roughly be $1.26 million. Now, with the market value for the building, I am going to assume that we put 25% down or $315,000, leaving us with a mortgage of about $6,000 a month. We take that 6,000 away from net operating profits and we are left with $2,400 per month or $300 per unit. Now, let's take a look at our spud friend here. Now, I know the potato makes about $200 a night and to be conservative, I'll say it's booked 85% of the time based on the data that I pulled, which gives us an effective nightly rate of $170 a night or $5,100 a month. And again, I won't inundate you with the expenses, but it does come out to a net operating profit of just $4,034. Now to compare potatoes to potatoes, we are going to assume that $315,000 invested in the apartment building was more than enough for this land acquisition and build out of the potato house, leaving us actually with a 13 times more than the apartment building when you compare it at a per door profit. Now having managed both these types of properties, I'd much rather own the spud. Kind of makes you rethink owning apartment buildings, huh? The first issue at hand is the perceived idea that the market is saturated, which is both kind of true and untrue at the same time. Now, when you go into major cities or areas of high traveling traffic, there seems to be an overabundance of hotels, motels, and short-term rentals, which is true if you're looking for standard average managed stays somewhere around the city. They're everywhere. That's why the smart entrepreneur doesn't compete on the standard or average wavelength. We go different, unique, and target a different need within the travel space, quirky and weird. And it just so happens that quirky and weird can be achieved a lot cheaper than building an average single family home. Realizing that to stand out in a crowded marketplace is to be different, people start creating, designing, and building different types of rentals that scratch the itch of curiosity, wonderment, and adventure for our travelers. And this genre, if you will, in rentals will become more difficult to saturate is that going forward full weird requires a couple things that most people are not willing to do. Put out cash, time, find space, and then creativity. Sounds simple enough, but when I tell you, okay, go out there, buy a decommissioned train caboose, move it onto 17 acres and convert it into a comfortable living space and make it super quaint and different, where do you start? Seems almost easier just to go buy a decent house in the suburbs, doesn't it? And that's what most people do. Going full weird is a double-edged sword and people are afraid of it. You build something unique, but you risk going too weird and not getting the traction you want to cash flow the property properly. And you also don't build equity, which is the cardinal sin of real estate entrepreneurship or investing. No cash flows, no equity, bad day. Now listen, a spaceship house is cool and all, but to think you'll appreciate the same value and rate as a traditional home is a bit far-fetched. The conundrum of finding that balance between being different enough to attract guests, not scare them away, and creating equity can be a tough line to walk for both new and veteran real estate investors alike. And because of that, it leaves the market open to those who are daring and skilled enough to create a vision coupled with the rationality of running numbers and doing the market analysis. And to be honest, that's a very rather small group of folks. <sighs> Let's go back to the beginning of the millennial generation and see how did this all start. 
Now, if you want free guides to help you run numbers like what I just showed you and ways to get into the unique real estate game, head over to my website, kaiandrew.com and download them for free. You can also join my wait list for the Land Hacker program and all I ask in return is a virtual hug, a high five and liking this video. <laughs> Now, back in the 80s and 90s, the American dream was still very much alive and thumping down the streets of America. Bigger is better. You go to college, get a good career, buy a nice car, and pull out a large mortgage and get that big, comfortable home for you and your family. Then you can spend your days manicuring the lawn, hanging out the neighborhood block parties, and watch your kids play with the other neighbor's kids, and all your dreams will come true. <laughs> Well, then the 2007-2008 Great Recession hit and the American dream for the millennial generation uh, shattered. Fresh out of high school and undergrad, these young adults were blindsided by a massive financial collapse within our economy. With little to no work experience, no money, and lenders tightening up standards for mortgages, homes were basically out of the question. And from necessity came the massive DIY, do-it-yourself movement that led into the minimalism trend, HGTV shows, and then the tiny home and van life explosion. What was once deemed for hermits and loners and the lower class all of a sudden became a hit with the millennials as they learned how to build tiny homes and convert their vans for cheap and also convince others that they could live a full, exciting life inside 50 to 100 square foot boxes. And then came the rise of social media influencers and like the Fast and the Furious franchise, they shot nitrous oxide into the street race. As people looked up to these internet beauties, influencers started looking for more eye-catching and unique ways to engage their audience and grow their followers. They started doing photo shoots and videos at and inside these unique homes and the public swooned for more. And as demand ballooned, it created niche businesses that designed and built tiny homes on trailers and van conversions. But the key question is why? Why would these quasi structures usually associated with the homeless or poor all of a sudden become the rage for middle class America? because novelty sells. Ask each generation of toy makers and movie producers, nostalgia is a multi-billion dollar industry. People will pay a significant amount of money in the attempt to recapture their childhood memories. Think of Marvel movies, Ninja Turtles, or Hot Wheels for the millennials. And with us growing up with tree houses, forts, and boxcar children books, we are seeking a different and unique experience that brings us nostalgia and invigors the sense of adventure. And that's the magical and profitable word, experience. Wah, wah, wah. Don't believe me? Well, the potato at the beginning of this video makes around $5,000 a month or about $60,000 a year. That's the equivalent of a good entry level accounting position. Want to know what's crazier? This tent here makes double that at nearly $10,000 a month or $120,000 a year, the equivalent of an experienced civil engineer career. The thing is, is that weird and cheap sells. People today are searching and wanting something different from their normal lives. But why in the world would people pay these prices for something so strange and cheap to build? Millennials were raised in the American dream with the expectation that they need to get it for themselves. And that expectation is still grounded with a reasonable career, a reasonable car, and a reasonable house for the reasonable family. What that means is that nobody in their right minds would pull out a mortgage and build a massive potato or yurt to raise their kids in. But the snazzy social media influencers, HGTV shows have gotten us all giddy on these crazy unique spaces. So instead of us building and living in ourselves full time, we're willing to rent them out at a premium just to experience and of course capture it for the gram, just like a Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. The reason why Weird and Cheap has become so incredibly profitable and expensive is because it offers us travelers, adventurers, and vacationers a new and different experience we could never capture in our daily lives and homes. There are two more key advantages to Weird and Cheap here. They tend to be smaller and mobile, which means you're able to put these quasi structures in areas and on land where you normally wouldn't be able nor want to build a standard house. This flexibility allows people to take advantage of incredible views, locations, and ultimately experiences for relatively very little money. 
And second, just to clarify something about the minimalism, minimalism movement, a lot of folks believe minimalism means to be cheap, thrifty, or frugal, which it can. But it's more about consuming less. And by consuming less, it does not necessarily mean spending less. So instead of using 250,000 to build or buy a below average 2,000 square foot home, a minimalist would spend $250,000 on a 700 square foot ultra unique small home. Same amount of money, but significantly different ways of living and commercial possibilities. By now you're sitting in one of three camps. One, that's cool. I wanna stay in a potato now. Two, that's sweet. I wanna build a potato. Or three, this is too weird. I want nothing to do with this. Well, if you're in the first two, I can help you and maybe convince you if you're in the third camp. There is a real need for stays around the world, especially well-built and managed unique stays similar to the potato house. Now I've got the free guides you can download on my website, kaiandrew.com, and you can even sign up for the wait list to my program where I teach how I've been doing all of this for the last decade. And since it's free, I ask for something free in return. Please like this video and check out this other video where I talk about how my friend is making $50,000 a month on mini A-frame cabins. Love you all, Kai out.